For video two, we're going to focus in on the e-text and the guided notebook and how to use those two together to help you be successful. The guided notebook is a required component of the course because as you complete the guided notebook and you create your own notes that create your own textbook, you're not only learning the mathematics in the content, but you're also learning some note-taking skills how to read a textbook and how to put those things together to actually practice problems. So the guided notebook is a very important piece of what we're doing in this course. So I'm going to just click over on the left on an MTE. I'm going to click on MTE 1, but again all the MTEs are set up exactly the same. And I'm going to go to Unit 1.1 actually take a look at the e-text itself and learn a little bit about that and then I'm going to introduce you to the guided notebook and how the two are connected. To access your e-text and the correct section on your e-text you can either click on the blue button or you can click on the link over in the text. Now in the event that you see more than one link in this area or more than one e-text section listed you will need to click on each of those links as the button will only take you to the first link. So making sure that you can use either of those to get where you need. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on Read and Interact and that's going to enter us into the eText area. When you click on the eText button, it will most likely open either in a new tab or a new window. So sometimes it's a little bit confusing on how do we get back to our course. If you look at your tabs across the top and you see two items like the Pearson eText and the course, then you would simply click on the individual tabs. Or if you look at your toolbar, which mine is on the side versus on the bottom, you will see multiple openings and one of those is our original course. So sometimes we feel like we're stuck in the e-text and we can't get out, but that's exactly what's happened is it's opened either a new tab or a new window. When you first click on one of the read and interact buttons, it's going to take you to the screen that says things you need to and the important part about that is these are the skills that we're expecting you to have before you enter into this material. And if you read that title, Graphing Integers on a Number Line, and you don't feel like that's information that you know, then that may be something that you want to go back and revisit by clicking on You Try It or on the video that will show you how to do that information. And we're going to look at both of these features in just a minute. But this very first screen is not the new material that you're going to be learning. It's the things that you should already kind of uh, be familiar with. Now before we go on to the next page, let me point out some few things. You may have seen that I just highlighted that statement in blue. And I did that by clicking on the blue highlighter here and just dragging my mouse across it. I can also put uh, notes or mark things with pens so that I can come back to the, those notes later. So this is important. I can save that. And now if I were to go to the next page and come back my pin is still going to be there and I can double click on that and I can see my note. So maybe you're reading something and you don't understand it and you want to make sure you ask your teacher about it. Maybe put a pin there and then when you go to class go in and say can you help me understand this material. The other buttons here allow you to adjust the screen in terms of size so that you can make it a comfortable reading level. You may choose to look at one page or two at a time I'm a big fan of the one page because I need the larger print, but you are certainly welcome uh, to do either page. So here's the screen that, that we are back on. Now how do you go from page to page? I was just doing that with these arrows. So these arrows will take us page to page, or if you know exactly what page you want, you can also type it in here. So if you're trying to jump to somewhere else in the textbook. You can also navigate directly around the books by doing things like we know that it is chapter 4, uh, section 4.1, 
and I can click on that and it would bring up this screen. And I'll show you how you would know which textbook section to use in just a little bit when we get to the guided notebook. So this is kind of your navigation screen and this will help you with uh, getting through your, your uh, interactive e-text. Now let's actually go into the textbook because there's some great features in here. As I go to the next thing, this is the actual new content objectives that you will be learning and those objectives are numbered in your guided notebook as well. So let's say we didn't need all of these, which is very possible, and we only needed Objective 3. I could click on Objective 3 and jump straight to that. Now, what I could do, I'm going to jump back, is, or I can just page through. So 4.1.1 is the very first objective. If I just go to the next page, you can see that Objective 1 is up. I want to point out a few key features about this interactive e-text. When you see words highlighted, if you click on those, those are going to give you information about that word. So it's almost like either giving you an example or a definition um, of the word. Next, down at the bottom of each screen, you will see a button that has a little audio button. If you click on that audio, this little screen pops up. Use that little audio button and you press play, what's going to happen is they are going to read this information word for word. So here we go. 4.1, page three. Objective one, identify the numerator and denominator of a fraction. To count whole items such as students, calculators, cell phones, and so forth, we use whole numbers. To describe part of a whole item, we can use fraction. So as you can see, if you would like to have the audio read to you, you simply just have to click on the little audio button in the bottom corner of each. I'm going to go on to the next page for some other things. Another feature of the guided book is that you will be actually interacting with the problems. And so in this example, they give you uh, some examples to do and they give you the answers to those examples. But then what we want you to do is to actually try the type of problem, but on your own. And those are the You Try It buttons. And when you click on the You Try It button, it is going to pull up a screen that is very similar to a homework screen. And so I'm going to show this to you, but what I'm going to do is really give you a good tour of this screen when you get into video three. But this is somewhat of a homework screen and it's asking you a basic question. It's asking us what the numerator is. So I'm going to put the number six in and I'm going to check my answer and it tells me that I'm correct. But now it wants to know my denominator and I'm going to put the number four in to get it wrong so that you can see that it, it tells you you're incorrect and then it gives you a little tip on how it might help you understand the problem. So the You Try It problems are problems that you'll be responsible for doing more on your own because the textbook is, is not going to work it out for you. Another feature that you is a video. Right here on example five, there is an example and it's asking you to try to answer this question on your own and then you can click on this to view the answer. If you got it right, you're good to go. But if not, you can either click here or here to watch the video. So let me show you what that would look like. It is actually a person and he shows up here at the beginning. In this example, let's represent information with fractions. And I'll just jump to the middle so you can see that what he'll do is talk and a write total through the problem. Of 15 plus 13, which is 28 students. 15 of these students are male, so the fraction of males... This actually is a page that has everything. It has a video, for example, seven. It has definitions highlighted, and it has you try it, as well as the audio. So this is a good page that shows that for any given topic, there will be lots of ways to help you fill out your guided notebook and understand the content. Now let's take a look at how the guided notebook and the e-text go together. 
To prepare for that, I'm going to go back to the beginning of Unit 4.1. I'm going to go to the page that lists the objectives. Now let me pull up a copy of the MTE1 Guided Notebook. This looks the same as for all the MTEs, and you could actually turn to this page in your Guided Notebook and look along there as well and maybe make some notes. If you'll notice that over on the left-hand side we have MTE1, so the first number in all of these units is 1 because those are from MTE1, and the, then the 0 .1, 0 .2, 0 .3 are our unit numbers. These are numbers associated with our MTE courses. Over in parentheses, it tells you what section number you are going to work on in the e-text. So what we have done is taken a mathematics textbook and we have structured it to meet our uh, objectives and goals. And so our objectives or goals are the units and the textbook e-section is the section that has that material. You're going to see in a minute that there are going to be some times where that gets confusing. So I'd like to reference this page as well as the next page, the pacing guide, that shows you that the unit on the left side is your MTE unit and that the textbook section is in this column to the right. So make sure that at any time you get confused about what you do, that you should go back to either of these documents to help you. And I'm going to point a couple other things out in a minute about that. So here is where there's going to be a tiny bit of confusion due to the overuse of the word unit. Units to us refer to our MTEs, MTE 1.1, and that's what we're working on right here. And that's related to eTech section 4.1. But if you will take a look at that, and a look at that, and that is where there may be some confusion. That uh, purple or that blue highlight area uh, really should say eText section 4.1. You are doing unit 1.1, which is up here on the header, okay, and that's our MTE number, but the eText section 4.1 is where the objectives are. So I apologize for that confusion, but hope, hopefully by making you aware of it that you will uh, pay attention. Also, here's the most important rule of the guided notebook. You only are responsible for the work in the guided notebook. Let me go back up to the pacing guide. Do you notice here we list the entire section, but right here we list 4.4.1. It is one objective. We list 4.2, uh, I'm sorry, 4.4.2. Especially look right here. We only list 4.5.2. So when you go into the e-text, chapter 4, section 5, you are only responsible to do objective number 2. So I've gone to that page in your guided notebook, 1.5, and it says here eText section 4.5.2. And that means eText section 4.5, objective number 2. That is, that is the only section of that eText that you have to do for MTE Unit 1.5. So use your guided notebook. If the problem is not listed in the guided notebook, but it's listed in the textbook, you do not have to do it. The textbook was written first. Our program was written using that textbook, but being selective of what we wanted you to know. So it is possible that when you go in your e-text, for example, right here, that there may be more than an A and a B. There may be an A, B, C, and D, but we felt like C and D were not appropriate problems. So only do what is in the guided notebook for that MTE. Be sure to ask questions if you have them whenever you're unsure. Okay, so now we want to look at how the guided notebook and the e-text go together. So I am on Unit 4.1, Objective 1. So I'm going to click on 4.1, Number 1. 
And I'm going to read this information in the e-text. And if you notice right here, my first question is to write the definition of a fraction and identify the parts. So I've read this material. I'm going to go to the next page. And now we have, after I kind of read through, and again, it's key that you're looking for the total learning experience, not just to fill in the guided notebook. So don't jump right to that box, but actually read the information leading up to it. So this area right here will help me in answering the question about what a fraction is and the parts, the numerator and the denominator. So you should, in your words, fill this area out with the definition. And then we should continue down through reading this information, trying the examples, and make sure we understand those parts. Now I've reached objective two. And as you can see here, the examples A and B that are in the e-text are here in the guided notebook. And so what you should do is you should uh, read the directions and try to answer this. Likewise, answer this. And then when you're done, you should go to the next page and the solutions are answered there. Also, there's the you try it exercises so that you can try more if you need. Now notice, and this is an ex what I was referring to earlier, this goes from example two to example five. So we are not asking you to be responsible for example three. We're also not asking you to be responsible for example four. It never hurts to read through things, but the, con the content that you need is based on what is listed in your guided notebook. So we are asking you to uh, complete example five which is here, and then if you have trouble with that, that's where you can click on the video to help you as well as the you try it. We then go right back into the notes where we're talking about proper fractions, and so over here, that's what we're going to fill in is what a proper fraction is and provide an example. So the goal is that as you use the e-text, you are filling in the guided notebook with your own words or with words out of the e-text, but you want to make sure that you understand it. And if there is something in that content you don't understand, then the next step would be to ask your instructor for help. But the first step is to help yourself, and that is by doing the reading completely, being actively involved in the reading, and then filling in your guided notebook, and then asking for help if you need help on understanding. Sometimes it starts off a little hard for everybody to be able to read the book and take their own notes, but you will become stronger at this, and it will make you a stronger student overall. So stick to it work hard, and believe that you can learn this way. We look forward to seeing your completed guided notebooks as we work with you in class.